action, doors open, we come in, we hit our mark here. We'll wind up over here, and then Matt will do the reveal. It's cardboard. Oh, man. Dude, I can see through this thing. How cool. Billy Gibbons, the legendary blues rock guitarist and frontman of ZZ Top, is a man of distinctive style, both in his music and his persona. With a lifelong passion for the blues, Gibbons has established himself as a true icon in the world of rock and roll. Today we are at Good Noise Studios in sunny Palm Springs, California, a studio owned by Matt Sorum, the iconic drummer behind bands like Guns N' Roses and Velvet Revolver. Together, Billy and Matt build a song from scratch for Cardboard Sessions 15. I'm here with one of my favorite producers, writers, and engineer on this session, Chad Schlosser, to discuss the magic behind the day. Let's talk about this Billy Gibbons episode. Oh man, how fun was that? Dude, the magic behind the Gibbons episode. He's a magic man. Dude, <laughs> but we were talking about this, like he came in with a song prepared. Like, have you ever seen him do that? We've never done a project like this together before. Good point. We've done records and like purposes to write songs, but we were planning on just coming in and doing like a shuffle or a blues yeah. jam. Yeah. And he's like, I'm gonna text you some lyrics. <laughs> and he texted me about jamming on his cardboard guitar and it couldn't have been more perfectly Gibbons and I know, I thought the same. I was I was telling the guys, I was like, you know, for somebody who's like dripping in blues, like that's the whole like purpose behind blues music is you write a song about like what's going on in your life totally exactly and so here he is like coming in to play this like cardboard guitar it's probably already a weird thing for him to like experience he ends up just writing a rad blues song about it <laughs> <laughs> so cool watching the process too like the magic behind it him just like like a total professional gosh I mean I, I, it'd be hard to name more iconic people that have been around so long that have produced so much amazing material and he just, he knows his process, he knows what works. Feeling the moment and capturing a moment in time is you know, the, the ultimate goal and he's just so good at harnessing that and you know, figuring out what he wants to lay down, he has a thought in his head and we've worked enough together to where I kinda, like I'm on the same pace as him sometimes and we're actually in it and we can just like move right along and that's why we're able to get it all done in one day, I mean. Totally, I mean that's what I witnessed in the room. I was like, okay, as a produ producer engineer, like there are some people who just know what they want, you know? He's so established with his music. Like it was fun to watch someone who just knew exactly what he wanted. Yeah. Watching him kind of lay guitar, um, have him kind of hear like maracas. He's just like ask you like, are there any maracas in here? Yeah. You know? And then all of a sudden he's out there shaking maracas, oh, you know? You're getting special, I mean, yeah. I like it. The riff I was really impressed with with Gibbons because it, it wasn't like the average Gibbons riff. <laughs> You know, I'm glad that we played with the tempo a little bit too on that because it came in and it felt like a little rush, but it was ripping. We slowed it down, but then it was too slow. And I think Matt had like the, the final suggestion to like to bump it up a little bit and it just sat right in that pocket. And then, because we were at Matt's studio and we usually have the drums con consistently mic'd up just so he could walk in and we can track. And when we switched out the kits and he like started playing, he's like, whoa, this almost sounds better than my vintage Gretsch kit that's in here in the same spot. It's just. It had all the elements that Mac, Matt likes. I know he likes like really just thick, boomy, powerful. Uh, are we gonna remember all that when we go to film it? No. <laughs> like yeah. the the backup vocals were awesome. Like I didn't even know he had that range, and he oh, was God. giving just... it. What what's your note on high harmony? Dude, he was giving it. Totally. So it was super fun to watch him do that, and he he had a lot of good ideas and. Those were implemented as well, and yeah man. yeah, man, he had great energy that day. The inspiration of having like a new instrument like yeah. that you've never really felt before yeah. or played, it just like brings out this whole new thing in you, and 
he was on fire that day. Like that whole outro piece that we recorded yeah. where he was just flying through those epic fills. I mean, it was just yeah. this whole new energy. Yeah. It was just really cool. So it was just good energy all around. And I think just new things for people to experience inspires so much. Let's go cut some paper. Come on. All right. Okay. <laughs> Woo! Was that clean? That's clean. That's clean. Okay. For us, that was really special. It was special for me, too, just because I don't think I've ever, in a single day, written, recorded, and shot a music video for a song. That's a lot. Yeah, that's, that's you know, a lot. People take weeks, months, years. Yeah, yeah you know. that was the magic of the day, 100%. It was, it was pretty awesome. Put Merck's paw prints on here. Chad, get over here. What is the year? 23? Yeah. In the year 2320. What? So from behind the studio session, you guys are going to be here. Merck's right from top. 